Hello and welcome to my workshop. In this pro tip video, we're going to be looking at ways to dress wood that is a lot longer than your machine. We have seen something similar in one of the previous pro tip videos that I'm going to link right above my head. Uh, in that case, we were looking at ways to dress wood that was wider than your material. Uh, in this case, we are lucky that the wood is uh, fit enough to fit in our width of the joiner, but it's a lot longer. And that presents a few challenges. And here is my little prop that I'm going to use to explain. So this is the joiner, this is the in-fit table, and this is the outfit table, and there is the blade that runs in the middle. So once the oversized wood with a big uh, bow in the middle comes in and gets cut, the cut portion, which is represented by the squiggly line, is going to run along the outfit table and at some point it will begin to dip. At the same time the back side will begin to rise and that leaves uh, a little area that is uh, still bow shaped in the middle that is not completely cut out. So even though that distance gets removed with every consecutive pass it doesn't get eliminated. So if you're looking at really tight joints, then you're kind of screwed because of that continued bow. So what to do now? Well, there is two options of it. If the bow is not as pronounced as we have it right here, you can simply take one deep pass and cut it out. So there is no problem there. But sometimes you're not so lucky. And what to do in that case? Uh, in that case, well, you extend your in-feed and out-feed tables. So, I'm gonna have this particular cardboard again with just a little extension, like this. And now the wood is going to run along a much longer path. Let's put it that way, it's gonna cut along a much longer path. And only the areas that are high are gonna be cut. And with each consecutive path that gets lower and lower. And finally, we are having that nice flat line that we are looking for. And this is what I'll be going to be doing in this pro tip video. Now, I have already started the process. I've done a few clamps and a few supports. Uh, and I am going to use the same method that I did when I was constructing those bookcases a long time ago. So I'm going to be using those same outfit tables or extension tables. Uh, they're pretty easy to create. You know, you just need long surface that is nice and straight. Uh, you might want to do it as a, uh, what you call a torsion box or glue more plywood sheets together. It's all up to you. I just use whatever I had at that time and I'm still going to use it again today. So because the joiner is very close to my bay door, I need to open up the uh, door and basically get cold air in because <laughs> it's minus nine on the outside. Uh, so in that particular case, uh, I'm gonna be, you're gonna see me wearing a lot more clothes than usual, but don't get surprised, it's because it's minus 9 degrees on the outside. So let me add the extension tables, uh, I'm going to keep that footage and uh, I'm gonna speed it up of course, uh, and then we're gonna start taking a few passes and see how good the wood looks. <music> So this is the whole setup. This is the extension table of the outfit table. This is the extension table of the infit table, the piece of wood that's on top. That is roughly almost towards the end of the extension. So we can see that it's pretty a long piece. Uh, the important thing is to ensure that there is a smooth transition between the extension and the actual table and that they're in the same level. So that's why you saw me using the big yellow level to ensure that they are on the same plane. Uh, over the years, the uh, extension tables have warped a little bit. I mean, th that was a simple construction that I did back then, uh, and I haven't used them since, uh, but this was a good opportunity to take them out and dust them off. Uh, the one thing to remember is if you adjust the height of the in-feet table for a shallower or a deeper cut, you need to adjust the height of the extension table. That way you don't get into any big deflections, for example, like this. 
uh, so you, that's why you need to adjust the table so that they all go into a nice straight line or almost straight line. Uh, without further ado, I'm going to get going on the task at hand and we'll see each other after it's done. After about half an hour of jointing, things are looking pretty good. The eyeball test uh, also passes. You know, there might be a tiny little deflection, like a half a millimeter, but considering the length of the wood, that's pretty good. And I still need to take it to the planer, so probably that's going to disappear with, uh, within the next few passes. Now, as I mentioned, I'm going to be taking it to the planer, and that is something that I've already done, and I'm not going to be filming that, so there is nothing uh, repetitive going on. Uh, and now you have a way to dress wood that is longer than your machine. And now the question is, we've seen uh, how to do boards that are wider than your machine, boards that are longer than your machine. What happens if your wood is both long and wide? Well, in that case you combine the methods and everything works the same. So you just need to adjust the infit table for one big deep uh, cut. Uh, also adjust the extension tables and then you also need to have an equally long support piece for running it through the planer. So uh, that concludes this video and if you liked it make sure to like, share and subscribe and hit the notification bell to get notified of my future video releases. Also follow me on all social media and consider supporting me on Patreon. All the links are down in the description.